Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In tonight's episode, we get to test some brand new kit from Team Fox's newest partner, Hick Micro. And we get to test it on everybody's favorite quarry, the Humble Rat. Drilled it. Hey guys and welcome back to the channel, thank you very much for tuning in. As we draw towards the end of 2021 and the weather starts to turn cold, like many of you, I like to draw my attention to the scaly tails. So very soon I'll be going out getting plenty of ratting action and hopefully sharing some of that footage with you. And one very vital piece of equipment I've not been really able to do without over the last couple of years is thermal technology. Now for the most part thermal technology is well out of reach of many people's budget but it is getting cheaper thanks for the introduction of other companies coming in to the market because let's face it it's predominantly been dominated by one key player that is until now and if you follow any of my social media posts on instagram more recently you'll know that team foxer have teamed up with hick micro so over the coming weeks and months i'll be bringing you some videos from kit produced by Hick Micro, and in today's video we're going to concentrate on this entry level spotter, the Lynx Pro LH19. Now before we get stuck into the ratting action, let's have a closer little look at this much more affordable feature packed thermal spotter. Measuring under 7 inches in length and weighing a smidge over 300 grams, this unit really will fit straight into the pocket. So for some of the test examples this evening, I set up this unit 30 yards away from my little Suzuki farm car here, uh, just so I could show off some of the features. Having a little look around the exterior of the unit, one thing you'll notice straight away is that the ergonomic design of this unit means it's very easy to hand in either left or right handed operation. The rubberized eye cap protects the lens and working from the front to back we start off with the focus ring. The focus ring simply does what it says on the tin really, it focuses your picture. The power button also doubles up as your standby button. A simple press of this in off mode and the unit will turn back on in less than a second. The second button down is your photo and video mode. A single press of the button and the unit will simply store a standard JPEG image. Press and hold the button for around 3 seconds and the video will start to record. Press and hold the button and the video will stop recording. The next button down is your menu button and also quick press button to change the different colour palettes. I'll actually show you that when we get out ratting. The next button down or the last button before the ocular eyepiece is actually your zoom button. Now as with all thermal units it's a digital zoom so the image will pixelate. You can try and compensate for this a little bit by adjusting the focus but nevertheless a digital image is always going to pixelate a little bit. Although it did find as you will see when we go ratting in a short time it's still perfectly clear as to what it is we're looking at. Lastly you have the ocular lens focus, it's a little tricky to show this on a camera but essentially it focuses the image that you see through the eyepiece enabling you to get a crisp clear image. The soft rubber eye grip is something I liked on this unit, it comes off nice and easy but not too easy that it's going to fall off and then simply replaces once again just as simply. This will mean that if it ever gets worn it should be pretty easy to replace. The unit is supplied with a handy wrist strap, a standard mount for a tripod fitting and underneath the rubberized protective cover you'll find a USB-C charging port and a handy little LED light to let you know when the unit's fully charged and ready to go. Now I don't consider myself to be wet round the ears when it comes to technology, I've been using direct Wi-Fi systems from one thing or another for a couple of years now. And one thing I like about the T-Vision app from Hick Micro is it's not laggy at all. It's very crisp, clear and pretty intuitive. 
It makes keeping up your friends up to date with the instant action a breeze. You can even access the menu settings from the device, meaning you can increase and decrease the brightness and contrast. And I would urge you to do this as it's one good way of making sure you get the crispest picture. You can even change the color palettes, make stop and start recordings as well, all from the app. What I've found is as you blow the image up even larger, so if you're watching this on a TV or a large computer screen, it probably won't look as clear as it does either on your mobile device and certainly not as clear as it does through the eyepiece in general. But as I mentioned earlier, in the black hot setting, um, it really is very crisp indeed. Here you can just see me playing back that little bit of footage that I've just taken directly on the app. Now, what I will also do uh, for those of you interested or want to know how to get the app uh, actually downloaded uh, and installed in the first place is I'll do a separate video on that, uh, which will only take uh, a couple of minutes for me to go through and explain, but I'll go through a step-by-step -step, uh, process on exactly how to install the app, how to put in the various different passwords and settings uh, to get you up and running. Now, like I said, I have used this spotter for foxing. The gamekeeper's actually filming me here because I'm on the rifle, uh, about to take a shot at this fox at 328 yards, and I missed it, the bullet went low. And this goes to show why thermal spotters are vital pieces of kit, because I clearly lost contact with the fox there as it ran to the left, but it came back into play, and the nice wide field of view meant that the keeper was able to track this one. And speaking of field of views, uh, it's one thing that you'll see Hick Micro does slightly better than some of its rivals. This video was produced by Optics Warehouse and I will put uh, a link to this video down below because I watched this prior to getting this unit uh, and as you'll see it's uh, pitched against some of its rivals. This is not the same unit I'm using but it is uh, one of the uh, slightly higher end units uh, and again it fares very well. Again I'll put a link to that in the video's description. Right guys, it's time to start ratting. Let me know what you think of the uh, unit in the comment section below uh, and I'll catch up with you very soon. I was called to this private residence um, a couple of weeks previous to this visit um, to come and deal with a couple of problem foxes. They had some poultry go missing from this very pen. Uh, and upon my visit, I noticed a couple of rats here. So I thought this would be a great opportunity for me to come back and try the new Lynx Pro Spotter out. And as you can see here, I'm flicking through the different color palettes because it is a really warm evening. So all of the brickwork and some of the other solid objects that are around uh, these critters are also very similarly um, quite warm. So, uh, But changing the colour palettes and adjusting your contrast and brightness settings, you're able to flick through um, the different colour palettes to give you the best possible image. So here I'm using the smooth zoom that the Hicks got, going on maximum zoom there, and you can still very clearly see that that's a rat. So it's time to slip the spotter into the pocket and get set and ready to take these critters down. Now I've got my mate Dwayne from the Wash Wildfowler Field Sports uh, YouTube channel. He's got the camcorder for me. And at the moment, he can't quite see the same rat that I'm looking at. He is looking at the ones that are coming to the feeders, so you can see through the night vision camcorder, there's still quite a few critters running around. Um, and it's often the case, and I actually don't mind shooting like this, but it's quite challenging because you've got to consider this wire fence here. Uh, you can just see that there's a crossbar there really that my pellet would hit because the pellet I know the pellet's going to be rising up towards my zero point um, so I stand a very good chance of clipping the fence there and getting a bad ricochet and that's something we clearly we want to avoid so I've got to wait and just bide my time until the rat comes into the open like such although of course you've got to 
Got to wait for it to keep still, and Sod's Law says he stops with his head in the wire. But this looks like about the right time. A very satisfying slap. That noise never gets tiresome. And that one bowls over an absolute treat. Clearly his mate runs for cover, so I've just got to wait a few minutes for that one to come out and play. Now using the black hot setting here on the Lynx Pro Spotter as you can see gives it a very crisp picture. You can even see the detail on the padlock. Um, but what you can't quite see is the rats moving underneath the shed. When I flick it to the red hot setting the extra heat source of the rat's body as you can see clearly shows another rat in view just underneath that piece of wood there. And we're about 26, 27 yards, I think we ranged it out, this one. You can run, you can try and tuck yourself away, but you can't hide from the foxer. So while I patiently wait for these friends to come out and play, why don't you guys catch up on some rat action that I managed to capture over the course of this year so far. I didn't quite have enough clips to get a video together in its entirety, so I thought I'd ping these on the end of this video, just for you rat fanatics. Enjoy! I often stay on the target area because you'll often get that rat that you think you may have missed flicking around. That's very indicative of a headshot. I didn't quite see that one or it had expired, so I bowled his mate over instead. not having to contend with any tricky wire shots with this one, so he just lays down very gently and gives us a nice appreciative wave instead. Next up I've got a session that I filmed in probably the coldest setting I've ever ratted in. A quick zero check in minus five conditions before we head out to see if we can clear a few rats from in and around some more pens.
hit the wire. These are all yours. Oh, you're definitely in. down. <laughs> yep, a big shout out to Ronnie here for the invite on this extremely cold evening. It was cold, but we definitely had some fun, mate, didn't we? We must do it again sometime soon. Ronnie's standing just to my left. And as I noticed that I hadn't actually chambered one and he was eyeing up the same rat, I thought I'd let him take this one. You want it? Do you want it? Go on, you take it. Sure. He's asleep too. Drilled it. That third one's huge. Oh, I'm out. Where is it? It's in there, sniffing the dead ones. You want him? Slaps it. He's just very kindly flicked himself out. Straight in the cranium. Okay, so thanks for sticking around until the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed the ratting footage. What did you think um, to the Lynx Pro LH19 from Hick Micro? Uh, my genuine thoughts on this unit, and actually shared by several of my friends that have used it um, as I've been out and about, um, <clears throat> typically if we've been foxing, in my area um, the fields go on for quite some considerable distance. I know it's not like this all over the UK, but it's not uncommon for our fields to stretch five, six, seven, eight hundred yards. Um, so in terms of a long distance spotter, it, it, you know, it isn't. It is perfectly adequate for foxing out to two, three hundred yards, no problem. Um, but I would certainly say that for a ratting and rabbiting tool, um, you're going to be hard pushed to beat this. Even with units costing four times as much, the, the, the visible difference at close range is virtually 
uh, you know, it's negligible, uh, to be brutally honest with you. Some people say the fact that this has a internal battery is a bit of a downside, but the truth of the matter is I've been out uh, with this unit for six or seven hours solidly, um, and you know it was still going at the end of it. And ultimately, it's no different to a phone, really. If you run out of juice, you can simply open the little battery cover, um, stick a, a USB-C cable into a little battery pack, put it in your pocket, and you can always charge it up that way. So it's really not um, the end of the world. Price-wise, it's more than comparable um, to the spotters that are out there, and it offers kind of features that you only find on some of the more expensive units, such as a direct Wi-Fi. And I think you've seen the quality of the image that's then displayed on the mobile phone is absolutely superb. Um, certainly on the black hot setting, there are images that you know you find it hard to distinguish whether actually you're looking at a black and white photograph. It's it's that good. What else do I like about it? Um, ergonomically, um, being either left or right-handed, nobody should have an issue operating this unit. So the eyepiece is set, uh, unlike some which come with a shaped eyepiece for either the right um, or left eye. Uh, this one completely ergonomic, and to be really, you know, to be honest, you can feel your way around these buttons so easily um, at night. It's it's really very lightweight as well. So in terms of putting it in your pocket um, and, and stuff and carrying it around, it's just not going to get in the way. I would like to see a neck strap, um, I think, because again, uh, from, a sh from the shooter's perspective, um, you know, putting it in a pocket and stuff every now and then, it's just going to be very easy to get up uh, and look. It's also, because of the ergonomic design, one of the easier spotters um, to actually use if, you, if you're doing a kind of traditional lamping style of shooting, where you're actually driving through the field and having a look, because you can actually look through one eye and then keep an eye on the uh, farm track or, or, or whatever it is um, with the other. One of the features I really did like was the very fast startup time. It's fastest. Uh, it's the fastest one I've used so far. So, you know, literally tap the power button, it's in standby mode. Tap the power button again and it wakes up. Startup time takes around six seconds again, so it's not, um, it's no Usain Bolt of starting up, but at the same time, it's faster than others on the market. All in all though, this spotter offers very good value for money and I am extremely excited to see what else Hick Micro have to offer. So watch this space, we should have some great content coming up for you very soon. Also coming up on the channel soon, I've been out on Fox Patrol quite a lot lately, so I've got a lot of foxing footage for you. Next week, uh, I've been invited to a trip to shoot the Gamekeeper's Duck Pond, so I should hopefully manage to uh, get some footage strung together for a video on that one for you. Myself and Dwayne are very likely to be out. Um, again in a not too distant future so plenty of stuff to get my teeth into. Down below in the video's description you will also find the Team Fox at Amazon page link so you can help support this channel uh, by doing your usual shopping through Amazon using that link uh, and Team Fox gets a small kickback from Amazon. Every little helps. If you like this content and you want to see more please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to take care, stay safe, and as always, happy shooting. I'll catch you in the next one.